So, my dear friends, I would like to continue speaking about, as I have already said, most important topic of our theological education, the spiritual life. I've already made an outline and we've addressed one of the most important issues. Who can have faith in Christ? What is the way of acquiring this faith in Christ? It seems to be quite a disregarded question. Yet it can be quite a surprise if you make a closer consideration of the issue. I'm going to say that may seem pretty astounding. It turns out that it is not at all the one who seems to believe in Christ that says he believes, that has true faith in him. No, not at all. One can be convinced he is a believer, that is, he could believe in Christ, that Christ came into this world, suffered, resurrected, ascended into heaven, gave his gospel, believe the theological teaching of the Church, attend the service, and so on, and what the Fathers say, and after all these, one can turn out to be an unbelieving person, so who has faith in Christ? I remind you, my friends, of this fundamental truth, without which all our Christianity is senseless. That's why I cannot cease reminding this. It will be absolutely meaningless. So who turns out to have faith in Christ? Let me read this to you once more. The beginning of conversion to Christ consists in coming to know one's own sinfulness and fallenness. Through this view of himself, a person recognizes his need for a Redeemer and approaches Christ through humility, faith and repentance. As it turns out, he who does not see his sinfulness and does not feel his inability to live a sinless life will never accept Christ the way he should. And therefore he will never have this saving faith. We were, we were already discussing why this is so. Of what need is Christ to the person who considers himself quite healthy? There's no need in Christ for the one who sees himself on a safe and warm side. Why should he need Christ, as he is so good a person and is already saved? Everyone has sins. However, I do not see my death. I will say it once more, my friends. This is so much important, no matter what our spiritual state is. We must know this even if we wouldn't move a finger to fulfill it, as it often happens, unfortunately. Yet we must know and be able to explain this to people, that the faith in Christ as a Savior begins only in case I see I can do nothing with my envy greed, and other stuff I wouldn't like to enumerate now, until I see I am suffering of this, and every passion causes pain to me, and until I don't feel it, I don't need any Christ. Be I three times a believer, be I of any high rank, title, or dignity, no matter who I am, even the Pope, I'm not a Christian unless I see the inward and sincere need in Savior. Let's look at the one in the state of emergency, the one who's drowning or being assaulted. Look how he cries out loud with all his heart, help, save me. This is exactly the state of mind that is capable of receiving Christ. This is the beginning of faith in Christ. When we come to feel all the filth of the stuff that takes place in our heart, yet not seen by anyone, 
What a great truth is revealed through the Holy Fathers. This is it. This should always be kept in mind and transferred to, the, to other people so that everyone will see what our salvation and Christianity is. It is not at all this external and dead-hearted form when we visit a temple, take part in confession, and take communion. I will say it again, dead-heartedly, what's the profit? That's the only way to make it profitable. So what is this way? Only if one is really eager to acquire faith in Christ, when one really begins to seek the truth, strive for it, only then this external life side will be the means for one to get to know himself little by little. There are these essential words of Christ. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, they could be a slogan, if you like, for the entire Christianity. Those who are healthy have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. If you remember, I was speaking about the divine irony. Who are those healthy that have no need? Where are they? Who is well among the people? We are speaking of the spiritual life. There are no such. The greatest saints, when having acquired the state of sanctity, yet were uncovering something. Uncovering what? Let's listen to one of them. Believe me, brethren, I will be thrown the same place with the Satan. This is a basic truth, my friends, which we should grasp and realize. Otherwise, Christianity is empty, is a so bubble unless it keeps this essential truth. And there are many people that have been deceived, thinking they are something, whereas actually they are nothing. Now you see why Holy Fathers attach so much importance to humility. The reason is quite obvious. Humility is a state of vision of my necessity for the Savior. Otherwise, I will die of the passions which tear me apart inside. You may remember what Basil the Great says at the beginning of one of his homilies. There was not born in the hearts of men a more harmful passion as envy. And as he proceeds, unlike the other passions, when one could find some kind of satisfaction, one has nothing with, with envy, but one just has pain for the success of one's neighbor. This makes this poor fellow suffer. Isn't it horrible? This is, my friends, to remind you what we have already been speaking about. And there's another thing I would like to remind you. We do know the outward social laws, and often we speak about them. However, should we also know the inward spiritual laws? Let's have a look at another one. So, who is capable of seeing himself? What is the way to see himself? Well, as far as I see myself, I am good enough. How can I see my needed Savior? That turns out to be a most surprising and important thing. The one who lives according to the basic principles of the world, who doesn't make himself to live according to the commandments, certainly I mean the commandments of Gospel, compared to which the commandments of Moses are quite primitive. That is, if one does not guard his thoughts, feelings and desires, so living according to the world, thus living a sinful life, dreaming airily of about anything and having any kind of feelings, doing what he likes, nothing special as it seems to be, on the surface, actually, this is living in this whirlpool. Never he will see himself as a sinner. This is a striking phenomenon. By the way, it's another startling evidence of the degree of our fallenness. I cannot see my sin unless I live in this atmosphere of sin. That is why the one who wants to see Christ 
That is, to get to know his need in Christ must go out of this unbearably stuffy atmosphere where you can cut the air with a knife. And indeed, unless the one leaves his room, never he will see where he was. Thus self-knowledge, as it turns out, is necessary for man. What's the way to get it? Let's listen to the golden words of Saint Simeon, the new theologian, which I am going to slightly rephrase to make it clear. A wholehearted effort to fulfill the commandments reveals to man his actual, authentic state. He did say a bit differently. Painstaking fulfillment of Christ's commandments teaches man about his infirmity. But we'd better say an effort than fulfillment, as, unfortunately, this would be more up to reality. Moreover, it reveals not only infirmities, but man's sins, passions, and, if you like, impotence to live the way Christ calls upon us. By the way, here is an advice St. Ignatius Benchanino gives us. If one refuses to judge his neighbors, his thoughts naturally begin to see his own sins and witnesses, which he did not see while he was occupied with the judgment of his neighbors. What a witty advice! Nice as it is, but how could one fulfill it? It's pretty hard to imagine, maybe because I left the theological school too much time ago, while he was occupied with the judgment of his neighbors. One must literally grasp and hold himself from doing this. Stop, stop and take a look at yourself, dear. Thus, my friends, this is the main truth I am going to remind you a hundred more times, well, a hundred and one times. Please, don't be embarrassed. And unless we stick to it, there is no Christianity at all, and there will be no orthodoxy, no matter how many different church rewards you get, only knowledge of himself and humility and repentance, which come from this knowledge, can, can give birth to faith in Christ. This is the only way.